Hi everyone, it's Monday morning, it's half past six and I am awake and rapidly regretting my decision to watch Family Guy and get to sleep just after 11. Um, I'm going to be heading to the office soon, but I just want to spend a bit of time with Jake before I go. I will be popping home at lunchtime to see him, I think, unless I just decide to take him. I'm not quite awake enough to make that decision yet. Last night I finished This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I've given it four out of five stars. I actually really enjoyed it. I felt this was actually quite an honest account. You know, it's not just all funny stories. There are a lot of funny stories in there, but there's a lot of emotional stories in there. You know, he's no longer a practicing um, NHS doctor. And, you know, obviously there's reasons for that. So, and, you know, I think he's he's very honest about the effects that it has on your life as well. So, yes, his job was rewarding at times, but also damaging to, like, personal relationships and friendships and things as well. So, I thought that was that was really, really good. So tonight I'm going to start the next book on my TBR for non-fiction November, which is under the theme style, and that's The Button Box. I still absolutely love this cover. Uh, the story of women in the 20th century told through the clothes they wore. So clothes, style, that's my link there. Um, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to this. It looks a cute little book. I really need to wake up. So he sits in the computer chair beside me. Morning. Obviously decided to bring him in today. Um, however, it's now half past seven. I've been here about half hour or so. Um, it took a while to defrost the car, de-ice the car, and I've just set up the training room ready for today's course. I'm expecting the trainer in within the next half an hour. And I really, really need to wake up. Hi, it's now about quarter past, twenty past five. I have just shut down the computer. I was at the office until about three-ish. Then the course finished, I thought I'm just gonna come work from home. Um, and that's what I've been doing. I've done so much today, it has been epic. I know I've been going for about 10 hours, but I've got everything done from a bank reconciliation. I've done um, about 200 bookings that have gone in the diary, also on the staff allocation system. That takes ages. But I did all that, I've done so many emails. I've just, I've really, really caught up on so much work. And then since I've been home, I've been working through this online course I've got to do, ideally within the next couple of days, but I've just finished module 13 of 17. So made massive, massive headway with that. Um, rubbish dinner tonight, chicken nuggets and chips. Um, but Tesco's aren't delivering until about eight, nine o'clock tomorrow night. And I didn't think about feeding myself. So I've gone to, I've got to pull out a couple of meals that I had, like as a, a backup in case we get my partner's son to stay last minute, like with an emergency. We just have like a couple of meals in to feed him just in case. One of which is chicken nuggets and chips. So I'm really sorry. Um, but the other half's away tonight, so I wouldn't get a little man to come and stay anyway tonight. So it's okay, I will replace the food. Um, but yeah, I the other half is is in a hotel in Brighton. Uh, he's teaching. He comes home tomorrow evening, which is good because I'm missing him already. I know, sad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm really hoping. I know we're going to do a little bit of work online tonight from our respective places but we're both quite tired so I'm hoping he's going to be in agreement that we can chill for a couple of hours this evening I want to sit I want to get reading I need to relax a little bit because I've got to get up again in the morning I've got my little um my little my small horse that I'm looking after again tomorrow I'm dog sitting again in the office while there's a course running what could go wrong happy days so Duke is very like his mummy and daddy tonight um I spoke to Dean earlier and he's so tired, he's like, should we go out to bed at nine? And I was like, yes. And he said, well, I'll FaceTime you, like, you know, to say goodnight. I said, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, anyway, I just went up to use facilities. It's six o'clock, right? And Duke tried to go up to bed. So he's he's definitely in tune with mummy and daddy. It's been a long day and we're really tired. But anyway, it is six. Potentially I've got more work to do. But I'm just going to take half hour, an hour now. 
read, chill out. Um, yeah, so I'll catch up with you a bit later that you know what I've been reading. So it's about half past seven now. I'm really fighting the urge to go to bed. I'm determined to try and stay up till nine o'clock. Duke has just watched the new Dog Tanyon film. That's the Sky Cinema down over the day and he quite enjoyed it. I love watching this dog watch a cartoon for like an hour. It's just too cute. I have started my second book on my November, my non-fiction November TBR, which is The Button Box. And I still absolutely love this cover. That's so cute. Uh, this is to fit the style prompt because it discusses clothing. I've read a few chapters. It's quite interesting. We have looked at um, sort of jet buttons and black clothing being used for mourning and how that sort of came about. Um, the colours of the... Um, the colours the suffragettes wore, we've discussed what they were wearing when they were in the munitions factories during the war. So there's a lot of things covered in here and it's just like loads of little micro histories and I quite like that. Um, but I need something light and fluffy now because I'm really, really feeling tired. So I'm going to move on to another book. I went back to this and I've just finished the second novella, The Second Chance Road Trip for Christmas. And it was fantastic. There was naughtiness and there was romance and it is exactly what I needed. And it was bloody brilliant. So happy days. I'm back home with my favourite nugget. Um, and we're running a bath, aren't we? Did you miss me today? Did you even notice mummy wasn't it? Did you even notice I wasn't here? Or did you just have a nap? Anyway. Oh, well, that's charming. So, yeah, running bath. Uh, I've got to go downstairs, finish an online course after. Um, we've got food shopping coming tonight. We do. And then your DAD is coming home tonight. He knows the word. Um, he's been away. He was away last night teaching course. So he'll be coming home later today. I just want to sleep or sit and read. But we've got a lot to do, haven't we? Are you going to help mummy? You don't know. Hard life being a dog. Oh yeah. So it's now Wednesday afternoon. I forgot what day it was then. I was meant to have a Zoom meeting at lunchtime, but that's got postponed now till next week. And I got really anxious about that. So my anxiety is still hanging on in there a bit. Even though the meeting got postponed, my anxiety brain hasn't quite switched off yet. Um, so I took Duke out for a walk. We were out for about an hour. Started off at the park. And I was texting Dean and he said, oh, you know, take your time, chill out. And I said, oh, what, should I just take the dog to the pub then? And he said, yeah, go on then. Um, so I did. Uh, it added about an extra, well, it should be a five minute extra walk from the park to the pub. But Duke sniffs every single leaf. He loves leaves. So maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, but he was really well behaved in the pub. He was a little bit nervous at first. And then he just lay down beside me. Um, I only got a small lemonade anyway, but it was kind of just a test to sort of see how he'd be in there. And he was really good. Um, so that was great. And then, opposite the pub is a charity shop. Now, the woman that loves it, her name is, loves it, runs it, her name is Sharon. She is such a sweetheart. We adore Sharon. So we know that I went in there and purchased some books. And her books are the six for two pounds. So, first one was an author bite. This is one of those authors I see all the time everywhere and this is Michael Morpurgo how you say it and this is the amazing story of Adolphus Tips must be about a cat but as it was an author by um, and I was intrigued so that was the first one then I got this little cheeky one it's only 85 pages it's the girl on the platform and I got it really because I thought it'd be really handy for readathons it's absolutely tiny and the print is actually like fairly big so that was great Next one, title by, On Chesil Beach. Right, I have no idea what this book is about. Right, when I picked it up, I'm like, I just heard the name so many times, I'm just going to pick it up. Is it about sex? It says, it's July 1962, Edward and Florence, young innocents, married that morning, arrive at a hotel on the Dorset coast. At dinner, in their, in their rooms, they struggle to suppress the private fears of the wedding night to come. Are they worried about bonking after getting married? Is that what it's about? Is it? No, it can't be. 
anyway i digress um then i got boy tales of childhood so this is one of those um roald Dahl books that i didn't get when i got my collection earlier this year and this is i think the first part of his autobiography so i thought why not then i got two books from my school days first one i got is the curious incident of the dog at night time i know i read this i don't remember what it's about obviously it's a dog at night time and i don't remember what i thought of it or anything and i don't know I just thought I'm going to pick it up. And the other one is responsible for my A-levels, really. And that is Sophie's World. I know there's a copy of this in my parents' storage unit somewhere. But I love this book. This just, my first introduction to philosophy, I thought it was absolutely amazing. I, I still find philosophy an absolutely massive, the interesting field. And I did it for A-level. And my regret really is, is almost not doing it at university. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So, AS level, not A level. Either way, I absolutely love philosophy as a result of this book. So when I saw it, I thought, well, do you know what? I think I'd really love to read it again, even though it's a bit of a chunk. But I just thought it was fantastic. And then after that, like, if I read, if I liked in the book, it discussed Plato and one particular um, story or tale or something. Then I, Dad had all the collection of them, so I'd like, all oh, right, I've just read about this one, and then I'd read the relevant, like, um, a bit of philosophy link to it. So it's great. Anyway, I'm not the only one that got something in charity shop, and I'll see if I can insert a clip here. What'd you get in the charity shop? Jiggy, what'd you get? Did you get a tennis ball from Auntie Sharon? He carried that all the way back right and there was one bit of the walk back he needed me to carry him it just got a little bit too much for him um so i had him under one arm and i had to hold the tennis ball by his snout otherwise he kept nudging me so it was just a bit awkward but bless him he just oh it was just so cute welcome back to my sofa it's now seven o'clock on wednesday evening and I'm just back from the fan meal. Um, it's required, okay? It's required. Nod and smile. Um, and my pile of books beside me, I'm gonna do some reading. I've got my furry nugget washing his paws on my lap. And I am going to be the life and soul of our town tonight. I am going to drink my wine, read for a couple of hours and go to bed. I know, right? I know. You just didn't expect such a wild, fun pack vlog i know that and i really apologize um i am so tired oh my goodness anyway what am i reading i'm gonna read a little bit more of my non-fiction november book first the button box um because it was kind of cute and i want to keep going with it uh i don't know what else i'm gonna read another chapter probably the dark side of the mind i want to read a lot more of the cost of knowing because i didn't read that last couple of nights and i'm really enjoying it I don't know. I'm just going to see where the mood takes me. Um, and where the wine takes me too. So it's half eight now. I'm fighting to stay awake. But I'm not going up until nine o'clock. Um, I'm finishing tonight on this one. The button box. Um, at about page 100. I'm enjoying it. It's not wow. But it's interesting. Loads of little micro histories on the different buttons. So we just had a nice interesting chapter on pearl buttons. And the link there was to um, a baby outfit that went back to the history of her mum being adopted. We discussed the founding hospital. So, yeah, as I said, it's those little micro histories and it's, it's quite interesting, really. Um, and, the, you know, the chapters are only about eight or nine pages long each. So nothing's too heavy, which of an evening when you're tired is really quite handy. So... I'm almost finished now, The Dark Side of the Mind, and I'm actually enjoying it now a lot more than I was last week. I think we're now getting more into individual cases. We've learned about um, somebody that maybe shouldn't have gone to prison, I don't know, controversial, something happened, but then it found out that they had um, a neurological concern, that's all I'm saying. Um, which led to that behaviour. And then we've just heard now of um, 
a case where somebody removed a body part, not the part you think, thank you, take your minds out of the gutter and sent it to the loved one in prison. And however weird it probably makes me sound, I'm actually liking this is getting a little bit more disturbing. But unfortunately, right towards the end. But whereas this was probably hovering at about a 2.5 star, this has definitely picked up quite a bit now. So I'm pleased I didn't DNF it and I persevered with it. So I'm now going to read another chapter at least of The Cost of Knowing before Little and I go up to bed. I only have four chapters left of The Cost of Knowing. Only about 40 pages, I think. And I really wish that I was more awake to continue and finish this. And I, I'm gutted that I'm so tired. So really now we're at the stage that, um, as I mentioned, Alex and somebody else has have has these powers about like seeing the future and stuff and he just finally thinks he's cracked it and got rid of this curse and everything's going to be okay and what he predicted was going to happen isn't going to happen and sort of start relaxing a little bit and now stuff's happening and he's getting worried and you know that it's all going to play out in like the next couple of chapters and it's just going to be really emotional um but I'm tired, so I'm going to have to finish that over the next couple of days. It is just really good. It is about quarter past four on Thursday afternoon and I really, really want to go home. I've been here since about eight-ish and I had such amazing intentions for today. I worked my butt off my intro, right? So these, these are empty plastic boulders in here. So this is all that's left, and that is a day's work. I should have been able to get that done today. Have I? No, because every time I plan my day, it never happens. I just get bombarded with emails and text messages and all sorts, and I just haven't done what I wanted to do today, and that's just left me really frustrated. You know, I've had a really productive week up to now and that just really just sort of feels like a bit of a kick in the teeth. It's just like, you know, I thought I was going to be able to leave for the weekend having done everything and now I'm not going to be able to and I don't know how much time I'm going to get in the office tomorrow because I've got a booster jabs in the morning, then we're going to the storage unit, then the other half's working in the afternoon. So it might be that I end up going from the storage unit to home depending on like how long we're there and stuff. I just don't know. Oh, I'm just fed up and I want to go home, but at least the other half's off tonight. Mind you, we just had problems with a vehicle on its way to London, so unless they get that working, he's going to have to go and give him another vehicle and he'll have to sit and wait for the um, breakdown cover to come out so they can go to work. So our evening off together could be completely buggered. I might have to walk home if that happens, uh, which isn't the end of the world because to be honest, I could probably do it in about 20 to 30 minutes. It's really not that far, but it's getting dark. I didn't dress for that, um, but I'm going to leave you be and stop whinging and whining now. I've got to turn this day around, or at least the evening, because I feel pants and probably could go a glass of wine right now. Hi, it's nearly seven o'clock now. I'm just waiting for the other half to get home. I just finished The Cost of Knowing. Really enjoyed this book. Lisa, thank you so much for getting me this. I loved the story in this. I loved all the offshoots, the stories, the character characters. I liked the way they handled the racial issues that were raised in this. This was just a really, really good read. And what I liked as well is it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. I was so sure that I was predicting the ending and I couldn't have been more wrong. And I quite like that. So yeah, I would recommend. Oh yeah, it's Friday morning. It's about half past 10. I had my booster jab this morning. And then we went up to the storage unit. We've got some of the Christmas stuff. We're going to do a room or two at a time this year rather than just go all out over a weekend. Um, but I'd like to start getting some Christmas decks up over the weekend would be amazing. Uh, so we did that. I've just emptied the car. I'm just going to pop to B&M and then I'm going to get home and I'm going to work from home. Um, Dean's gone to the office and he's off to an event this evening so I'm not going to see him now probably until about one in the morning but hey so 
I'm going to go to B&M and I'll catch up with you later. The only reason I'm going to B&M today is Duke gets certain little treats to go in his room um, for bed and just when we go out. So, and it's a utility room, the dog doesn't have a room, let me clarify that, but we call it Duke's room. Um, and he's running out of treats, so off I go to get him more treats in case I've got to go out and about this weekend. I don't want the hassle of trying to put him to bed without his favourite treats. Look how much we were able to get just in the back seats of my car. The other half is just epic at Tetra, seriously. How did we fit that much Christmas stuff just in the back seats? My boot's full. So he did really good. I'm easily pleased. Hey Neil. I'm with my little man and we're running a bath again. Um, I'm shattered. It's about quarter past four. Handled some work stuff. Um, I'm halfway through deep cleaning my living room. But what I thought I'd do, I was going to deep clean it. Because what I normally do around Christmas time is I deep clean and then I put the Christmas stuff up. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to deep clean the living room and then get the Christmas stuff up. And then do another room and another room, etc. But then I remember that I needed to do painting on a couple of the walls in the living room. Where sort of just over time they got bashed and scratched. And then that ended up with me doing the skirting board. And then I did another two coats of the coffee table. I am absolutely covered in paint. Um, and I'm shattered. I cleaned the windows and or like the window sills, I'm halfway through the hoovering, then I put the new tree up where it's going to go, um, and it's, it's smaller than last time. I like it, I do, because this one's got berries and snowy things and stuff on it, it looks really good, but the other one was bigger, sort of like spread out a little bit more, but then we kept knocking ourselves on it, so this one's probably better, but it just looks a lot smaller, so anyway, I've not decorated yet, I just put it in place. Um, and then sort of cleaned around it because I thought if I'm cleaning I'm sure you know what it's like you just get all the like the bleeding needles all over the floor so I have to hoover again anyway so I was like let's just do put the tree up now uh, I'm going to see how I feel a bit later about whether or not I'm going to decorate tonight um, hopefully the coffee table will be dry soon and I can put some bits that I got for that um, to go on top of that today and I've got like a table runner and then this little pretty candle thing that I'll show you once it's all set up so that's good so I haven't done any reading yet but I really really want to and I'm sure I will later tonight because if I do put all the Christmas stuff up I'm going to try and stay awake to get Dean's reaction of it tonight because he won't admit it but he's a big kid when it comes to Christmas but right now I just want to jump in the bath which hopefully is going to wake me up my arm is so so sore after the jab today but fortunately I had it in my left hand left arm and I'm right handed so I've still been able to paint and stuff but it is so sore right now maybe hot water bath it might soothe it a little bit I don't know um possibly a glass of wine another Christmas film I watched the Santa Claus earlier with um Dudley Moore in it um yeah I think I may need another Christmas film I'll catch up with you a little bit later I'll show you sort of where I am on the decorating front the tree front and the reading front so, tree, painted table, muffin. Psst. Hello. Hey, so it's now six o'clock and I'm done for the night. I was hoping a bath and hair wash would give me this amazing hit of energy. I'd have a glass of wine, I'd be decorating the tree, listening to Christmas carols. And I'm under the duvet on the sofa, duke on my lap. And I'm going to alternate between reading and probably napping. Um, I don't know why it feels so rough all of a sudden. I think it's just been a mentally and physically exhausting few weeks. I suppose everyone's got a limit. I just could have done with my limit not being tonight. I can't just pet you all day, you know. I'm sorry. Someone's been quite needy this morning. So I felt really rough. I went to bed at seven o'clock last night and I still feel really rough today. Um, but I'm up, I'm decorating the tree. I need to get the living room back together, but I'm finding after about 10, 15 minutes of doing stuff, I need to sit down and chill out for a minute. So hence cuddles with this little nugget. 
I decorated my tree. I absolutely love it. Hello. I feel really ropey, but I just had to get the tree decorated. I just, I love it so much. That is just one of my favourite things about this season coming up. I just love a Christmas tree. If that was the only decoration in the house, I would still be happy. She says, with that at her side. But the tree is just, I don't know, it's the central part of the living room and it's just beautiful and it just makes me happy. So anyway, I've retreated to the sofa now. I've been keeping up with my non-fiction November reads, but I'm tired and I've got a headache. So I'm just going to read sort of more light and fluffy books. I'm going to keep going with Under the Whispering Door and Holidays of the Wongs. And I'm just going to read a chapter or two of each before Strictly Come Dancing. That's my evening. Catch up with you later. Hello. So I am so nearly finished the third story in this one, which is the fake, um, fake girlfriend for Chinese New Year. This is where we join um, a third brother that we've come across in his family, which is Zach. And he's getting fed up of his family, uh, setting him up with random blind dates. So he knew that for Chinese New Year, his family would have set him up with a blind date. So he's asked his friend to be his fake girlfriend. And they both clearly have feelings for each other. And I'm just waiting for them to just admit it now. I'm also a few chapters now into this book. Just a few, but I'm enjoying it. I love TJ Clune's writing style here. Um, and we are joining Wallace, who is dead. And he is now meeting Hugo, who is a ferryman, who takes people over to I suppose where they go on to um at the moment Wallace is struggling to deal with the fact that he's dead and I imagine that's that would be quite an emotional time but I'm really excited to find out where this book goes at the moment because I genuinely have no idea no guesses where it's gonna go um but I'm enjoying it hi everyone it's Monday morning and I realized that I never actually ended my vlog so this is me ending my vlog. Um, thanks for spending another week with me. Again, it's been really nice to actually get some reading done this week. I also read Heartstopper Volume 1 yesterday. I got the Kindle book and oh, it was beautiful. Absolutely love that. I wasn't sure I was going to because it's had so much hype. And after a couple of books that I've read because of the hype, I've been a bit disappointed. So I wasn't sure. But actually, I really enjoyed that. What is this little bit of hair? Oh my days. Anyway, have a great week and I'll speak to you soon.